By the end of this video, you'll understand the screw modifier completely and how it's related to the revolution tool that is in many CAD programs and why it's called a screw and how you can make threads and bolts within Blender. What's up? I'm Jonathan and welcome to Maker Tales, where I'm sharing my maker journey to help you go further in yours. So don't forget to subscribe and hit that little bell icon to never miss an opportunity to keep making. This video is all about the screw modifier, which is an incredibly powerful modifier that can be a little bit complicated if you don't truly understand it. It basically lets Let's us create everything from revolve operations to springs and even threads for bolts and screws. Starting with a fresh blender file, let's go ahead, select everything and delete it and bring ourselves a plane into our scene. Now we're about to explore the screw modifier and I really suggest that you start from the beginning of the course or at least from the beginning of the modifiers and put in all the add-ons. It's all linked down in the description because if not, you're gonna get lost very quickly. So let's go ahead, let's add this modifier of screw. Straight away, it looks like it's broken. Trust me, it isn't. It's just, we're going from a 2D surface here and we haven't given it any height. It's just sort of rotating in this spot. And by the way, when I say rotating, this is very much the revolve modifier that we get in oh so many precision tools out there. Now, straight away, you can see that it looks very complicated. In fact, it looks very much like a screw and we are gonna get there, but we're gonna get to doing screws and bolts and all that by the end of the video because we need to cover a lot first. So with this here, what's happening? Well, for every iteration, we're going 360 degrees and it might not be that apparent right now. So let's go ahead, let's change this down to 90 and there we go. So much simpler to understand. So every iteration, an iteration is how many steps there are, and these steps are dictated by here, by steps in the viewport, so we can set this to three. So every iteration, one, two, three, we have 90 degree rotation going all the way along up there. Now, why is this last one counted as an iteration? Because, sorry, as a step, because we can increase the iterations and then it turns into a step itself. That there is the screw modifier in a nutshell for 2D shapes. Now let's talk about it in a revolve fashion because that's probably how we're going to be using it within the 3D space, especially when it comes to precision modeling. So let's go in, bring in a single vertex. And if you don't have that, make sure you add all the add-ons linked down in the description. So we're gonna bring this out, let's say five millimeters. I'm gonna to snap to a side view now so I can see the vertex and then extrude this out so that I know it's on that plane. And one more extrusion. As you can see, this is very much the workflow from oh so many precision modeling out there. So we go ahead and we do this edge and then you guessed it, we're just gonna add a screw modifier and we have some lovely revolved mesh. Now, something to keep in mind. First of all, the shading is completely screwed up and I don't know why. For some reason, Blender in the new update, it no longer lets me shade flat for this. So if you want to see the geometry, you're gonna go over here and we're gonna go and turn on our wireframe so we can see what's going on. Now, of course, we don't need to add any screw to this because if you want, you can. You can create some sort of spiral staircase or something, but right this minute, we're doing a revolve. And all of this is being controlled by the origin point. So if we went ahead and we went into our tools and moved our origin point, and now we go and do select our objects, go G, you can see as we move our origin point, things get screwed up very quickly. And of course, if we were to rotate our origin point, things even crazier start to happen. So just be aware that right this minute, everything is controlled by our origin point. All right, let's say for whatever reason, we're happy with how this is. Let's go ahead and turn it into a mesh. Well, key thing that we need to remember from oh so many modifiers is we need to merge sometimes because right this minute if we do not merge and we go ahead and apply this you can see that right down here we have a whole bunch of vertices all right there in the middle so make sure that you go ahead and hit merge and then with that merge you know that they have merged all there perfectly Okay, so from here, how does iterations work? Well, iterations don't work when you're talking about a revolve. There's just one revolve. And then these steps, if you want, you can go ahead and crank this all the way up, get some increased resolution for your revolve. Or if you want, you can bring this all the way down, something like four, and now you have a great square pot thing. Okay, so from there, that is basically 
the revolve function within Blender. And remember that we can stack modifiers. So for whatever reason, if you wanted this and you wanted to give it some thickness, we talked about the solidify. I told you the alternative. So you can go ahead and give it some thickness here. And now we have this lovely pot already. We can go ahead and apply all of them. Give it some time. It will do it, I think, if I select things properly. Um, apply. There we go. And now we have this lovely mesh that is all ready to do whatever you want with. Okay, so now let's go ahead and get a little bit more complicated. So I'm gonna go ahead and undo all of that so we get this screw and solidify once again. I'm gonna delete the solidify. I'm gonna go and bring this screw up to, I don't know, 50, so it's something nice and high. So as we know from our last video, the power of curves is pretty awesome because we know that right this minute, this is all a screw, but if we wanted to go ahead and start rounding all of this, it might be a little bit of a pain to go ahead and go control B and then making V and then let's go ahead, let's increase this up. And there we go. We can set this to, I don't know, 0 0.5 millimeters. And there we go. And then we have to go ahead and do that to all of that. Let's say you wanted it to be quite an organic sort of feeling revolve that you were doing here. Well, we know that we can turn mesh into a curve. So let's go ahead. I'm going to delete this screw modifier. I'm going to select our object here. I'm going to go ahead and convert it to a curve. Now I'm going to go and take a look at it from the side and take it into edit mode. So you can see right this minute we have that polyline like I said in the last video. We can go ahead and right click and we can set this spline type to a bezier giving all of our handles once again. Now in this view it's fine to go ahead and just sort of move these without any problem. But just be careful that if you're in the 3D view and you go ahead and move things, remember that you're moving this in the 3D space and we need to have this all aligned perfectly. Of course, you can move this and constrain it off the X axis so it still moves on just that plane. And then you can go ahead and have all the fun you want with that. All right, let's quickly cover these handles a little bit more because they're going to become quite important later on when we're talking about more modifiers. So right this minute, we have here a handle. Let's go ahead and let's change this handle. Let's go select it, right click. You can see here on the shortcut of V, we can change the handle type. Let's go ahead and change this to an automatic handle. So automatic means that it's gone ahead and averaged sort of the in and out of this as that. Now there's the vector handle, which is basically the one that is on right this minute. Or if you want, we can go ahead and go for the aligned one. Now this aligned one, what's just happened there? Why has it stayed aligned to this one and not to that one? This is the normals, the directionality of a curve. A curve has a directionality and we'll talk about that in a lot more detail later on. But just be aware that sort of the order of creation is important to a curve because that sort of says, okay, well, that's the direction that the curve's going to go, so I'm going to follow that. And speaking about that, that means that it has a normal, and normals let us do some crazy things like this. Let's say that this here, I very much wanted to be able to move this on the its own Z, so I can just pull this further along. How do I go ahead and do that? Well, the way that I found it is you go ahead and go with the move, and then here in our active, we have to go ahead and set it to the normal and now you can see we can go ahead and pull that further along and do whatever we want with it. All right, let's just go and do one more little edit while we're at it. So I'm going to go here. Let's select this one there for now and right click. I'm going to go and change this to maybe I'll change this to the automatic one. So V automatic. There we go. Some crazy shape like this. And believe it or not, the curve modifier likes to be used with screw. So you can go ahead and screw this and there you have it. We have this lovely pot vase thing, whatever you want to have there sorted out. So from here, we can go ahead and go object, convert to, whoops, convert to, and we go mesh. And now we have a lovely mesh. Now, why do we go ahead and turn it into a mesh? Now, the re main reason why is because if I go ahead, go shift D, on the Y and duplicate this out. And then I convert this one back down to a mesh. You will see that the key reason why is, well, mesh just lets you do some crazier things with it. So if we go here and we bring in a cube and we go here 
and we bring in a cube. If I try and do a bool right this minute with that there, we're going to get a lovely error. However, if I try and do a bool with this here, it lets me cut it. And that's the key thing why we work with mesh and not curves, because we can use so many more powerful modifiers with it. Okay, now with that sorted, let's get even more complicated. The reason why things are going to get a little bit more complicated now is because we're going to learn the rest of the screw modifier while we're doing some real world things. So first, let's go ahead and let's create a spring. I'm going to do this by bringing in some circular mesh. And one thing that I'm going to say is in the future, I will be doing a video telling you what the best vertices are so you don't get jagged edges when you're 3D printing circles. If that's not linked on the cards right this minute or down in the description, it'll be out real soon. So let's go ahead, let's bring this into edit mode and let's move this because we know the origin point is the key of all of this. Let's move this by three. And right this minute, if we were to do the screw modifier, this will turn into a helical shape, not a spring shape. So let's go ahead, let's go R on the Y by 90 degrees and now we will get a spring shape. So. Right this minute, let's go here, modifier, screw, let's bring the screw up by three, and there is our first iteration of our spring. And as you can gather, let's increase the iterations here, and let's also increase the resolution so it looks nice and pretty. And there we have this lovely spring. I don't know precision spring building, but this is as precise as you're gonna get within Blender. Now, of course, keep in mind, like I said, origin points control everything right this minute. So how about I show you how we can stop them controlling everything while we cover the helixes. So let's go and do that. So I'm going to go ahead and delete this. And for the hell of it, let's start with a curve. Let's go with a circle now. And I'm not going to go into edit mode because I want to create the problem. So let's go here on the Y. Let's go 1.5. Let's go shift D and G, Y, minus three. So we've got these two circles that are basically, well, they're a set distance from each other. Now let's join these. And as you see, we only have one origin point. So I'm sure you can gather what's about to happen when I go and put this screw modifier and increase the screw. One is going around the other. So how do we fix this? Let's take a look at the modifier here. So right here, we have this axis object. This is very similar to something that we've already learned. The mirror modifier, that one had an axis object as well. It had a mirroring object, and that's exactly what this is. And as you can imagine, what we can use is our empty or our null object. So empty, plane, there we go. Let's go ahead. Let's select that there, and it is fixed. Now we can go ahead. We can even get this origin point and move it all the way off wherever we want, because now everything is controlled by this one here. Okay, let's just quickly do a little undo there because I want to bring that origin point back because there's something else that you can do with this sort of axis object. You can go ahead and control the screw of it. And as you see, the screw has all of a sudden become grayed out, but now we can go and grab this and bring this up. One little caveat though, the origin point now has importance once again. More than anything, the Z relationship, the distance that's going on here. Because we go ahead and move this and we go G, Z. You can see as I move this, it starts to think that things are going a little bit crazy and weird. So just something to be aware of. That's how things are now linked up. Okay, so let's just undo that a little bit. Let's turn off that screw. And now we have this. Okay, so let's say this is exactly what we want, but now we have to remember whenever we move this, we need to select both of them, then go G and move, because if we just select one and we go G and move, well, quickly things break. So let's make these connected, so to speak. We're going to go and do an entire video on organization soon, but for now, just know that you can select this, and let's say you want this to follow that, like a child follows a parent. So you select the child, you bring the child to the parent, and you go Control P, and you go Object. And now whenever you select this and move it, it moves that as well. Now do be aware that I've seen that it does this wiggly waggly thing. I don't know if it's if it fixes itself once you land and stop moving. So it's up to you. Go ahead and experiment with that. But as you see, we're now right like this and we can move this like that. Okay, 
Fantastic. So how do I unparent this? Let's say for whatever reason, I don't want that there anymore. Well, to unparent it, just go Alt P and then you can clear the parent. Okay. Now let's go ahead and bring this all full circle. Let's go and create a bolt. So let's delete everything. Now let's start with the easy way on how to make a bolt. So we already have the add-on, which is Bolt Factory. When you create a new mesh, you can go ahead all the way down here and click Bolt. And lo and behold, you have a lovely bolt. We've got M10. And there is one thing that I don't like of this add-on. That has this lovely limit of 50 millimeters. And that is so annoying. So what I've done, down in the description, there is an edited version of this add-on where I've removed that limit. Now I'm going to go ahead and install it right now because there is sort of a way to install it so that it doesn't crash Blender. So we're going to go first into our preferences and then we're going to go over to the Bolt Factory here. We're going to turn Bolt Factory off and then we're going to go to the file that you've just downloaded. And this file is a zip file. The whole file is the add-on itself. So we're going to go install add-on. Now I warn you, that things can go a little bit weird when you turn this on. If it does, all you have to do is restart Blender. Make sure that the original Bolt Factory is off and what you're installing is Bolt Factory Edit and only that one should be on. So let's turn that on. Look, there's been no problem. And then now what we'll have when we go is exactly the same Bolt, except this time it will say Add Bolt MT Edit. And here's the key thing. We can now go set a preset and we can go ahead and make this lovely length as much as we want. Now the main reason why that was set at 50 is because look how quickly we get thousands and thousands of faces and edges. Now I have limited this. By the way, if you press F9, it opens up this dialog box once again, and I have limited this length to 1000. If you need more than 1000, I would be surprised, but just be aware, 1000 on an M10 bolt gives you a whopping 115,000 faces. So that will crash your computer very quickly. So now let's go ahead and let's talk about how to create a, a thread from scratch pretty much. So what I want to do is I'm just going to use the bolt that's here. Yes, I know I'm cheating a little bit, but you'll see why in a moment, because quite frankly, we have this awesome bolt generator. So I don't see why I would go ahead and create a bolt from scratch when I've got the generator anyway. So I'm going to select our lovely object here, go into edit mode. And I'm actually going to use the bisect tool here. So I'm going to bisect this. We're going to go and set this all to zero. I'll do it on the Y and let's set this one here to zero and this one here to zero. Then I'm going to do a lovely little cut like this and let's go and talk a little bit, very little bit about the theory of bolts here because they are quite intensive. So I'm just going to move this off to the side. And if you see here, that is a lovely image that shows you all the numbers that come with our bolt. So this here, the lovely two things, so to speak, if you want more, I can do more. I've done a whole one on gears and that is also linked in the description. So let's take this and let's go and do this ourselves. So I'm going to grab this edge right there, just that right there. I'm going to go ahead, hit P, go selection, go go out, and I'm just going to delete the rest of this. So I'm going to select that little edge that we've created here, and then I'm going to go back into edit mode. I'm going to go with our select everything, CAD transforms here, go G, go here, go Z, and go O, so it snaps the origin point, because we know that the origin point is key to doing our screw modifier. So I'm sure you already know what's about to happen here. So just very quickly before we do anything, I need to measure this right here, which is our screw height, which is 1.25. I totally did that on purpose to make my life easy. So let's go here and now let's add the modifier. Modifier, we can go with a lovely screw and let's go with a 1.25. And there you have your first iteration, so to speak. And now we can add a whole bunch of iterations, make sure that we're merging things. And there you have it. You have a thread. You can create your own custom threads from this. If you want, you can create nice rounded threads, whatever you want. You can edit this to your heart's desire to make this work for you. Now, if you're interested in tolerances and 3D printing and all that, I have done a video of that before where I haven't gone quite as much detail about screws and all the rest, but that is also linked in the description or in the cards.
Well done for getting your head around the screw modifier. It can be a little bit complicated, but you can also see just quite how powerful it is. I realized I didn't mention how to create nuts from it. Well, I'm sure you've pretty much gathered. All you have to do is go ahead and use a Boolean with a screw, or if you're using the add-on of Bolt Factory, there's a lovely little drop down from bolt to nut, and it's that easy. A huge thank you to my patrons. You guys are absolutely awesome. And it's the reason why I'm able to create all these videos here completely for free. And if you're enjoying what I'm making here and you think I'm worthy of your support, I would love to see you there too. Don't forget that we have a Discord and that's linked down in the description. Thank you for watching. Keep making and let the quest continue.